Good morning, afternoon, whatever it is for you. I hope it is good. This is Anaris, and I have a one versus one Protoss versus Zerg with Karsid's Zenith spawning down here in the seven o'clock ish position as the blue Protoss, and in the red position up here in the top right, we have a lot of characters, which I did a little bit of research found out this apparently stands for something along the lines of Fruit Cellar. Now, I got that from the place that I downloaded this from, however, I did find out some a little bit of additional info. It sounds like it's something like Fruit Cellar from far away. Um, I'm not too sure as my, my Korean is not that great, actually it's non-existent, but I did run it through the Google Translator, and this is by far the best uh, interpretation so far. Incoming Fruiterer. That's, uh... That. Incoming Fruiterer. So, we have Incoming Fruiterer spawning as the Zerg up in the top right, who is currently at 13 of 18 supply, throwing down a couple more drones. Meanwhile, in the Protoss base, we do have a gateway and a pylon at the top of the ramp, as well as a couple chrono-boosted probes coming out to work for Zenith, and we have a drone heading out of the base before we see a spawning pool, so we might see a scout or an early expansion. Very likely an expansion. Sure enough, there it is right there. Waypoint's already set for it. That's a really good thing, really good habit to get into for the newer Zerg players, really anybody. Make sure you set your rally points before the building is complete, so that way you don't, um, you know, have a bunch of idle drones when the building is finished. So a spawning pool going down as well as a drone going out here to hang out at the base of the ramp. The reason he's doing this is to keep the Protoss from building a pylon and, you know, reinforcing it with the Zealot and keeping the Zerg locked in his base and unable to transfer units between the expansion and the main area. So Overlord getting ready to come down here on this uh, very likely suicide mission within just a minute or two as the Protoss player does have his cybernetics core down as well as a zealot on the way. Another overlord coming up for uh, for the fruiterer, in, uh, incoming fruiterer as well. So the probe getting in here, seeing what he can see. It's kind of early in the game right now. Gas going down as well. Uh, probably see, it looks like the Protoss already does have his gas built and incoming. Sit on plenty of it right now as he is currently boosting out a Stalker, which will be very handy in taking out this Overlord. Pylon going down at the base of the ramp, so we might see another game where he builds out um, kind of a extended wall from the ramp to cover his expansion. We'll have to see as the game progresses whether or not he does that though, as this probe is checking out the Zonaga Watchtower. Not too much going on midfield, or really anywhere at the moment. A couple Zerglings hanging out, chilling at the base. We do have warp gate technology being researched, as well as two queens on the way. In addition to another Stalker, who is indeed taking shots at the Overlord, who should make it here above the ramp. Unfortunately for him, though, this uh, Zelgon Zelnaga Watchtower will provide vision to the Protoss player, allowing him to shoot the Overlord even though he's at the high ground. So the Zergling is going to come in, try to do some scouting. Unfortunately, he wasn't really able to see too terribly much, just a pile on here at the base of the ramp. As the Protoss player, uh, I'm not too sure what those pings are. I think there's a whole bunch of uh, spectators in here that were watching this game. Yeah, a whole ton of them. So those guys are there as, well, there as well. Fortunately, they haven't been too chatty in the game so far. Before it's going down for the Protoss player, definitely seeing another early expansion, very likely a wall here, as this is going to be extended out towards the right. While the Protoss player is trying to harass the Zerg, uh, particularly the Queen here, trying to take it out, which would be pretty devastating for the economy early, if he is able to kill that. Very close, 26 hit points left, however, it is not going to be able to get away, as even if she tried to bring it up this ramp, man, it, just, it gets super slow down here, or uh, up the ramp, off the creep, so ton of Zerglings coming out, kind of pushing off the Protoss Force, is not really too much they can do at that point, so they are retreating very wisely to their base as both players are going to take this time to mac her up a little bit. Got a sentry here going down as well as Hallucination. Chrono boosting the, uh, chrono boosting her, the Hallucination research on the way. Should be done very shortly. Zergling speed coming down as well as a cannon. So this is actually going to be a pretty nice wall setup for the, for the Protoss player, and these Zerglings are going to come in and see that this wall is indeed established. 
Uh, Nexus has just finished. This cannon is in a very good position. You know, this is pretty much just going to cover both entrances. And the Zerg player is going to see that as he does try to come in and scout, but this cannon is going to deny any sort of, uh, any sort of, you know, run up the ramp and whatnot. So, very good positioning of the buildings by the Protoss player. And taking a look up at the Zerg player, we do also have a uh, pretty much same thing going on, just macroing up. Uh, not too much tech right here at this moment. He is sitting on a couple hundred gas. Evolution chamber going down just a second ago. Protoss getting a weapons one upgrade. And he's going to knock down the rocks here, so we might see another expansion, which would definitely help the Zerg gain the economic advantage that is needed to combat this early Protoss expansion. The Protoss will be sitting in a very good position if he is able to fully saturate that expansion and pr start producing, uh, producing units very quickly. So he does have a uh, Phoenix here. That's what the hallucination was all about. This is actually a very cost-effective method of scouting. You've got to consider to get a real Phoenix. You know, you've got to tech up the starport. And you've got to also, um, you've got to pump out the Phoenix, which is going to cost a lot more than just the hallucination research itself. And the hallucination research will lend itself in a variety of ways throughout the fight. You know, you could create a couple Colossus uh, units to feel, um, you know, throw down to kind of fake out the enemy, make him get a whole bunch of light units when in reality you're very able to combat that. So, anyways, taking a look here, more gateways going down. Zerk still trying to get in here to see what he can see. However, unfortunately for him, there's not too much he can do at this point, as this wall is fully extended to the range of the uh, the expansion here. This is actually really good placement, as the uh, Protoss player does have the double pylons right here behind the line of sight blockers, uh, prohibiting entry from this way. Rocks are here, obviously they're not going to be able to get uh, get any units through here quickly without the Protoss player knowing about it. The only real entrance is right here, this little uh, this little portion right here. So, very good building placement by the Protoss. As the Zerg player continues to expand, does have his expansion over here at the 11 o'clock position that gives him a total of three bases. Uh, he is kind of spreading out his tech here, very good move, so that we have the, pro the uh, Protoss sends an observer to the main base. All he'll really see is an Evo chamber, spawning pool, you know, not a whole lot going on. Uh, but he is going, uh, looks like he's going to start pumping out a lot of roaches. We do have 12 on the way, as, long as, as well as the one armor upgrade. And we also do have the roach speed coming as well, so very good. However, the Zerg player does not really have enough units to combat this force, so what he is doing with these Zerglings is he is trying to bait away the Protoss by a few extra seconds. He realizes he's not going to be able to kill this proxy pylon, but any time he can bide to, you know, get some extra units, uh, will be able to help defend this base. So, very, uh, very wise move on his behalf. Or on, uh, for him. And Pylon is going to go down. Do have a pretty considerable amount of roaches here. However, it's not the best to fight versus this kind of stalker heavy armor. He's making an exceptionally good decision by having the burrow ability and burrowing right here while the units are nice and close. And I'll tell you what, if these things pop up, which they do right now, you know, the Protoss is not moving his forces back, so these roaches are just decimating the Protoss forces. They're just so quick. Uh, finally throwing down some force seals, then moving back a little bit, but really the damage has already been done at this point. And uh, he, the Protoss player did send some zealots up here to try to take out uh, the economy for uh, for incoming fruiterer. And uh, I swear I'm going to stop calling him that. <laughs> I just think it's really funny. But uh, he was able to burrow the drones. So really, I mean, this attack didn't accomplish too terribly much. He did kind of stall the economy a little bit. But, I mean, the Zerg player already has two two expansions. You know, this one is going to be saturated in just a minute, most likely. Uh, it's lightly defended as well, so... Uh, he had, the Zerg player is going to knock out this proxy pile on here, so really we're kind of back to square one in terms of uh, in terms of where this game is going. There's a proxy pile on here beside the Zelnaga Watchtower. For newer players out there, please take note, buildings do not activate the towers. So this player knows this, obviously. Um, it's just a proxy position, but I don't want you guys to think that uh, that would be a valid tactic for us if you just want to scout. So it looks like uh, it looks like um, Fruit Seller is going to be down here on the offensive a little bit, pushing down with his roaches, and he will be able to uh, maybe bait out some of the Protoss forces, um, maybe burrow in, go past the uh, go past the little choke point here. However, this uh, this photon cannon would be able to de de to detect that. So unless he took kind of a really wide pattern, but I don't think he's going to do that. So, a couple more pylons going down in the uh, in the Protoss space. We do have additional armor being researched for the Zerg as he tries to take out this high-yielded um, rock, blocking him from expanding. 
and taking a look at the income here, we do have the Third House player sitting at about 1,500, 1,600 thereabouts, whereas the Zerg player is sitting at pretty close to 1,900. So pretty close for both players. However, the fact that the Zerg was able to get that second expansion is definitely going to show here in the near future. Uh, Zerg checking out to make sure there isn't going to be any ex Protoss expansion at his own high yield. He definitely wants to maintain that economic advantage as the Protoss does have a couple of mortals here. Very good choices to combat the roaches as this, uh, this particular Zerg player is going a very roach-heavy build at the moment. He's doing an exceptionally good job of maintaining his creep highway, man. I mean, look at that. He's basically just got one big super creep base. So that'll lend itself very well for when he uh, when he is attacked and... Um, if he has to reinforce very quickly. So very smart here, getting some Hydras, actually. Not too sure where these are going. I think they're just going to go hang out a little bit. Scout around. But taking a look here, what else is going on? We do have uh, the Hydra range upgrade being researched. Still working on the weapons level 2. So and this, at this point in the game, the Zerg is in a very good position to make a push on the Protoss forces if that's what he decides to do. His army, uh, Protoss army, is very pretty, uh, pretty zealot heavy, which is not the best idea versus uh, versus the one with so many roaches. But but these forces are going to kind of dance around here. The high yield expansion by the Zerg was taken out. However, the Zerg does have a massive amount of units here, and he is going to use these, utilize these Zerglings very well, cutting off a couple forces. He, was, he did not overextend the Zerglings, which a lot of new viewer players often will do. As these forces are coming in here, our force field is going down. They are trapping some of the roaches, however, he was able to get a considerable amount of roaches in here already to do enough damage, at least until these force fields come down, and then he does retreat from the fight. Uh, Protoss player was very smart in getting an observer here. That'll help if the uh, if the Zerg player does decide to get any more roaches, or maybe you know doing some sort of burrow tactic or whatnot. A little good preventative manager there to, to have an observer. So uh, at this point, you know the Zerg is pretty much just going to be able to you know out macro the Protoss. The Protoss is trying to warp in a bunch of units, but here comes another attack from the north portion of the high yield base for the Protoss. He is getting a flank attack here, and these four immortals, uh, now three immortals, are running for their lives, doing what damage they can do, running and attacking, but unfortunately this is not going to be enough. As the third player continues to take out the high yield expansion, there is the, uh, I guess that's the GG from Carson Cena, as this game is going to probably come to a close pretty, pretty soon here, maybe. Oh, there go all the observers, and that is game, so... I cast a game yesterday where the Protoss kind of did an early expansion built out in front of his base like this, where, actually, let me get rid of the Fog of War here. Pause. Okay. So, Protoss kind of did a little bit similar build with the early expansion, having the unit, or the buildings out here make kind of a super wall, which was a really good move. Um, however, unfortunately, he did not really fully take advantage of the early economic uh, build that he did. He's running off of one, two, three, four, five, six gateways here. Um, and two robotics facilities. However, you know, really, I think if he would have expanded a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit earlier, maybe that would have helped. But I mean, I'm certainly not going to pass judgment here. So I hope you guys were able to take away a little bit of information from this game. You've now seen, you know, kind of how a Zerg reacts to a to a fast expanding Protoss. He basically just out expanded the uh, player. So very good move by Fruit Seller. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the game, and I will see you later.